So then we solve exercise uh, three. And here we have also the producer in a competitive market who is producing in the short run. The price of the inputs x1 and x2 equals to 2. And also x2, so input x2 is fixed at 8. So again, because one of the inputs is fixed, we have that it's short run. And the production function is the following. So I wrote it all here. And then we have to determine the short run total cost function. So actually here it's going to be very similar to the previous exercise. So the total cost function here, it's kind of almost always the same. It's just that x1 and x2 have to be optimal. So um, actually x2 it's always going to be 8. So we have to find the optimal amount of x1. And that we just do by taking our production function and we substitute 2 instead of uh, x2. And then we just, um, we just express, so we just um, put uh, x1 to the left hand side and we see what is going to be the optimal quantity of x1 depending on the output that we want to produce. Okay, so now we are ready to write uh, total cost function. So instead of x1, we substitute this optimal quantity. So instead of price of input 1, we substitute 2 that we have in the question. And then plus x2 is going to be 8. And again, times its price, it's 2. And so we are ready to open the brackets so that's our total cost and we know it always consists of the uh, fixed cost plus variable cost so again we just need to take a look what components do not depend on in, uh, on the amount of output that you want to produce and what components do. And so respectively it's going to be here variable cost and fixed cost. Then uh, we have to find, so in point B, we have to find the optimal scale of the firm. So I just remind you that optimal scale is also called efficient scale. And if you want a reminder on what it is, you should uh, take a look at the previous exercise session at the theory video where I explain. And so basically there are two ways to find the optimal scale. So you remember that optimal scale we have the yeah, so we have the average total cost. And basically that's the mean of the average total cost, but that's all also where marginal cost is going to cross it and so the first way to solve it, to solve it is going to be the find, to find mean of the average total cost so it's going to be a short run and uh, here first we need to find what is the average total cost so that's just uh, the total cost divided by y. Okay, so when we have average, it's always you have to divide by y. So we just take um, the result that we found here in the previous point, and we have to divide it by y. So I just rewrite. Oops. It's not something that I wanted to write. Okay, so that's what we found. And then we have to divide it by y. And so we are going to get this one. And so then we have to find um, its mean. And so in order to find mean or max of function, you have to take the derivative of this function with respect to y and set it equal to zero. So here, in order to find, yeah, so sorry, I just uh, 
wasn't here I was just looking for average total cost and here I'm going to look for the mean of average total cost so for this one I need to take the derivative or maybe yeah better to write this partial derivative of average total cost with respect to y okay because we have that average total cost changes with y okay and so how you find this mean that's basically you know that average um, that um, the derivative of um, function with respect to y here so average total cost with respect to y tells you by how much average total cost is going to change as y changes okay um, let's say by one unit and so why you have to set it equal to zero that's because you want to look where we have max or mean of function so here we have actually mean and so just imagine that yeah function goes like that and so we change y and so let's say here we change um, y for example at this segment and average total cost is going to go down okay and we change it here is going to go up but at the minimum or at the maximum at some really small point where we get to the top or to the bottom for the moment it will stop changing okay because it goes from uh, from going down to going up and so for some moment it's going so the change is going to be equal to zero okay so that's the meaning why we are setting it to zero so first of all we have to find the derivative so that's just uh, the standard way how we do it and we set it equal to zero so we just uh, continue solving So we just uh, take y outside yeah here we just use condition so if um, the result of the multiplication equals to zero it means that one of the two has to be equal to zero okay and so it's not y so then it has to be this one so and then we just continue to solve so we just rearrange all the stuff and we get that that's actually where y equals to this one so when we have that y equals to to that value you can use calculator to calculate it then actually that will be the mean of the average total cost that corresponds to some value or we have uh, the second way so that was the first way to solve it and the second method actually is going to consist uh, in in actually setting equal average total cost to marginal cost because we know that marginal cost crosses average total cost at its lowest point and so we can do it if you find it easier you can do it like that so first of all we have to find marginal cost again it's going to be marginal cost in the short run because we derive it from the total cost uh, short run total cost and so for that one we just have to rewrite the total cost that we found here before and we have to find derivative of that with respect to y okay so by how much cost changes when our output changes by one unit so that's the result that we get here okay and then we get uh, we also so then we have to set it equal to the average total cost
Okay, I, I just... Uh, I have it. Okay, and then we just have to solve. So here it's just the algebra. So just continue to rearrange. Here we put y outside. Okay, and then we use the same trick as before. So that's the second part that has to be equal to zero. And so that's how we get this one. And then when you continue to solve, you get exactly the same result as before. Okay, so that's efficient scale. Um, all right, uh, then we have point C where we are asked to determine the shutdown point. And you remember that shutdown point is going to be the mean of the average variable cost. So it has to be mean of the average variable cost. So first of all, we have to find the average variable cost. So again, average variable cost is going to be, so that's, uh, we have the total, yeah. Okay, so we found it somewhere. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so where we found average total cost and then va average variable cost is going to be the, um, yeah, actually how you can do it. So here you see that's the one, okay, here. And then that's uh, the vari mm, variable cost that was divided by y. Okay, so that's the average variable cost. And we need this one. Okay. So it's, it should be this one. Yeah. Okay. Four y to the power of two. And then, um, in order to find its mean. We can actually set it. So again, you take derivative, you set it equal to zero. Okay, uh, so then from here we will have that y equals to zero. Okay, so when we have uh, that efficient scale, actually that, uh, sorry, not efficient scale, but uh, the shutdown point that's actually so the mean of average variable cost that's actually when we produce nothing and um, we also want to know to which price it corresponds okay and we know that this is um, firm in the competitive market and so when it maximizes its profit it's going to set its output level to such a level so that uh, price equals to marginal cost and so actually what we need to do, we just need to, so we take the marginal cost that we found before. Okay. And we see what's the price when marginal cost, when we have marginal cost, when Y equals to zero. Okay. So we just substitute. So basically what's the price at the shutdown point. Okay. And we just substitute zero here. And so we get that that's also when price equals to zero. Okay. So when price gets to zero, actually it doesn't make any sense to produce anymore. Production gets to zero and that's the shutdown point. Then we have point D where we have to give the equation of the short run supply function. So that's actually very easy because we just need to memorize that when we um, want to find um, supply function, we just need to set price equal to marginal cost because that's the competitive firm. Again, that's the condition that it maximizes its profits. And so here we just substitute marginal cost that we found before. And we just uh, express Y here. So we just isolate Y on the left. 
and so here it's going to be the supply that depends on p also you can write that that's for p greater or equal to zero because we have square root which perfectly makes sense um, and so basically it shows you how much you're going to produce when you face that specific price well not you but the firm so how much firm is going to produce okay when it faces some specific price on the market so that's the supply curve uh, then we have point e so we have to determine the long run total cost function so long run total cost function you remember that's actually when we have uh, that we satisfy all these optimality conditions okay so we are at these optimal points and that's where yeah where we kind of need this condition okay where it's going to be satisfied so that's basically you always have the same standard formula for the total cost so that's super easy that's just the amount of inputs times uh, their prices so that's super easy but then if you if we had a short run there we were actually constrained that one of the inputs was at some specific level and here if it's long run then producer is free to choose any amounts of the inputs and so that's actually where we have to use uh, the conditional factor demands okay so that's where we are going to use the optimal amounts of inputs and so we have to find that what are these optimal amounts so for this we are going to use that condition technical rate of substitution equal to the negative of ratio of input prices and so when you take so when you find the technical rate of substitution you take the derivative you get x2 over x1 and you set it equal to the ratio of prices which is 2 and 2 okay um, yeah and actually we we did it a bit uh, differently here so we actually did that okay um, and then we just yeah so it's just equals to one and so from here we have that optimal quantities are such that x1 should equal to x2 and so then we can just substitute it into the production function and we get that y so for example if you substitute um, x1 for x2 okay so it's x1 to the power of 1 over 3 times uh, again x1 over 3 and so it's uh, it's like that and then you express x1 in terms of y okay and then you can do the same for x2 actually they're equal to each other and so we are going to have that total cost so that's long run okay i should underline it so it's going to be because yeah we just substitute this one and it's already simplified what i wrote here and then you just yeah you just even simplify it even more we also substituted prices which is here so that's uh, two plus two okay so we did that one then we have point f we have to determine the point of entry and exit in uh, from the market so that actually happens when we look at the average total cost uh, in the long run and that should be the mean of average total cost again you take you can take a look at the video uh, at the theory video from the previous exercise session and so in order to find it actually i'm going to write it like that it's just so you are going to i mean that's going to be long run every shuttle cost because you divide it uh, because you derive it from the long run total cost function and it's average so you always have to divide by y and so we just take uh, the 
we have this one that we found here and we divide it by y oops okay and so as a result you're going to get that it should be uh, okay I don't know why I write it like that. Okay, it's uh, 4 times y 1 over 2. And so then you have to find, again, I did the same story here. So we have to find mean of the average total cost curve in the long run. So you could, again, you could set it equal to marginal cost or you can take derivative, set it equal to 0 as you like. So there are two ways to do it. I'm going to take derivative, so that's with respect to y, and we should equal, uh, set it equal to 0. And so it's going to be this one, which means that y should be equal to 0. Okay, And when you want to find uh, the corresponding price, again, you use the same condition. And uh, here we just need to find what's the marginal cost. So we just take uh, the total cost, okay, and take derivative with respect to y. Um, and yeah, it's going to be equal mm, to this one, okay. And so then we set it. So then price equals 2, marginal cost when y equals to 0, and it's going to be 0 as well. So basically you substitute 0 instead of y and see what's going to be the marginal cost. And actually that's also going to be your price. And so the entry and exit point is also 0, 0. And then we find the last one. So g give the equation of the long run supply function again that's super easy you just use the condition that price should be equal to marginal cost so you just write that's the marginal cost and you set it equal to price and then you have to express in terms of y so you put y on the left hand side okay and that's going to be supply so how much you are going to supply depending on the price given by the market okay so we stop here with this um, set of questions and uh, actually the dual problem that we have here that's your homework and i'm going to put solutions on the model so just for you to exercise and then now we are going to move to the next problem set